interrupted anytime if you have one. Thanks. It's yours, Jamie. Welcome, Jamie. And I now have started the recording for the program. Great. I'll share my screen here with you. All right. So my name is Jamie Ingram. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I'm very excited to be here with you this morning to share some information around COVID and answer some questions that you may have. Um, a little bit about my background. So I was born and raised in this wonderful valley. I have over 20 years of nursing experience in acute care, maternity, emergency, community, and working with those with developmental disabilities. I am presently set up in Crawford Bay with my own independent practice. For those of you that are not familiar with the nurse practitioner role, what that means is I'm a registered nurse with advanced education and skills in medicine. So that now permits me to practice autonomously and take on a patient panel where I'm able to physically assess, order diagnostic tests such as lab tests, MRIs, CAT scans, give you a diagnosis, help you manage your condition, any chronic diseases, prescribe medications, refer to specialists as needed, and collaborate with a larger team to help manage your care. To date, I have, um, as a healthcare provider, worked through three different outbreaks of COVID-19. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get that to flip, thank you. So I don't have any real or potential conflict of interest to disclose today. And I just want to clarify that I'm not speaking on behalf of any health authority or interior health. And I just also want to highlight that COVID-19 is an emerging and rapidly evolving situation. So the information that I'm going to share with you today is based on current guidance and is likely to change. So I'm not gonna go through this in PowerPoint in its entirety. I'm just gonna highlight a bunch of um, take home messages for you. On March 11th, 2020, our lives basically, how we're living day to day and our socialization as we know it changed. The World Health Organization declared a worldwide pandemic uh, coined as the novel coronavirus 19. We know that it's a highly contagious respiratory illness that spreads quite rapidly from person to person. Our present data is showing that 25 to 50 percent of those infected with COVID will have no symptoms. So that's what makes this virus so unpredictable and dangerous. We also know that our original virus of COVID-19 has now mutated into four variants. So our first variant came out of the UK, followed by South Africa, then the India, and then Brazil taking out the tail. There is rumor right now that our wonderful neighbors to the south of us in New York are possibly experiencing their own variant of COVID presently. So stay tuned for that. Um, something that I'm not sure many of you are familiar with is um, something that um, healthcare workers have coined as a long hauler. What that means is that individuals who have had COVID and spent some time in the hospital did make it through their, their COVID virus, are now discharged home, but they're going to continue to experience some pretty extreme symptoms for many weeks and months to come. The, those symptoms are extreme fatigue, brain fog, uh, a horrible cough, and shortness of breath. And most of that shortness of breath we're finding now um, is requiring home oxygen in order to support that shortness of breath. And we're not sure yet how long those symptoms are going to continue for. Once you are infected with COVID, you do not gain a lifelong protection against future outbreaks. And recently, we've been really encouraging vaccines, but I think there's a bit of misinformation around the vaccines. The vaccines are not curative, 
And I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more down the road. So presently we have no treatment for COVID. If you do end up in the hospital, we basically throw the books at you and, and we try to give you anything and everything to help you pull through. Um, right now, the current treatment is that if you are infected, you do stay home and self quarantine through the duration of your illness. You are considered contagious as long as you are experiencing symptoms. And um, otherwise, it's just a supportive treatment. So that means getting lots of rest and fluids, taking some Advil and, and uh, Tylenol for your headache, fever, and body aches. Although, in my experience, the um, Tylenol and Advil don't even touch your, your body aches and headache that you do experience with this particular virus. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with this dashboard. It is located on the Government of Canada website. Um, it does give some stats um, for basically for BC. Um, it gives us a stat. You can see the, the blue writing there for the dashboard that tells us um, basically province wide where we're at. But if you click on the health authorities, it'll break it down a little bit more. So the map to the right of that breaks it down by community. However, this information is not updated daily. It's only updated about every one to three weeks. So because it has been publicly shared, I can share with you that Creston presently has 12 cases of COVID and the East Shore has six. Now by definition, an outbreak is five or more. So by definition and by the published cases, we do actually have outbreaks in Crawford Bay area, as well as um, Preston. So on April 23rd, our government had a meeting and said, you know what, we have to absolutely do something about this. We are um, meeting record daily highs of positive cases of COVID and we just absolutely have to do something. So they did, they put in some current restrictions. So the first thing they did was restrict travel to essential travel only. So that means that we are to only go to and from medical appointments. We are to go to and from our workplace. We are to go to and from the grocery store and we are to go to and from the pharmacy to pick up our medications. Otherwise it's not essential travel and we should not be out of our homes. All of the I, hotels, sorry. I have an appointment in Calgary next Monday. Mm -hmm. I have to travel to Calgary because that's the only place I go. Mm -hmm. any, so, any restrictions on that? Uh, medical travel is considered essential travel. So that okay. is permitted. Yes. If Thank we, you. If, I'm just gonna interrupt at this point. If we could just save our questions to the end and then I'll go on the screen after the presentation. Thank you. So other restrictions that were put in place is that all hotels in the province of BC were told to cancel any out of province reservations, as well as the ferries were told that there would be no extra sailings. And if any vehicles from out of province were trying to board the ferries, they were to be stopped and turned around. We also have grounded all flights to and from the Caribbean, Mexico, India, and Pakistan. Further, um, the government and public health officers put in some um, province-wide restrictions, which say that um, there will be workplace closures ordered if there is three positive cases in any given establishment. So that could be 7-Eleven, it could be Hilo's, it could be Tim Hortons, it could be Shoppers Drug Mart. If they have three employees who test positive for COVID, the business will be shut down for a minimum of 10 days to stop the transmission. Indoor religious gatherings and worship services are suspended, as are any indoor group exercise classes. Indoor dining in restaurants, pubs, and bars have also been suspended. However, outdoor Patios and takeout are still permitted. Now, in regards to the outdoor patios, they have now changed the guideline 
from a two meter or six feet social distancing to three meters or nine feet. Um, we're also being urged to work from home whenever possible, unless it's absolutely essential to be in the workplace. And there's a strong push that if your children are having any signs of illness or feeling sick to please keep them at home. Um, something as simple as a runny nose or just the sniffles could indicate in a child that they do have um, the COVID virus. So if that is the case, please get tested immediately. In regards to social gatherings, they've broken it down into indoor gatherings and outdoor gatherings. So our restrictions say no indoor gatherings of any size in your residence with anyone outside of your immediate household. So they don't want you inviting friends into your home or into your vacation accommodations, and they don't want you to be hosting any type of event inside your home. Now, outdoor gatherings are still permitted, but they're only permitted for up to 10 people. So for example, you can have 10 people on a beach or in a park or in your backyard, but you must maintain the, the social distancing recommendations, which are wearing your masks and maintaining that three meter distance. And they're also encouraging you to stick to the same people, not to invite new people into your groups. In regards to adult indoor and outdoor group sports, this applies for anybody who is 22 years and older. Um, games, tournaments and competitions are prohibited. So that means there's no hockey, no basketball, no volleyball, no tennis matches and no golf tournaments. They're saying that two people may engage in indoor sports with one another and 10 people may engage in outdoor sports with one another, but participants must maintain a distance of three meters and wear your masks unless everyone lives in the same private residence. I'm not sure if anybody has heard of any mask enforcement. I am aware actually of some individuals who have received fines for not wearing their masks um, in indoor settings. They were fined $230 each. So masks are required for every indoor setting. And I just want to point out to you that a face shield is not a substitute for a mask. The reason being is that when you put your face shield on, you have this opening below your mouth and you're not protecting others or yourself. So you're probably sitting there thinking, wow, we can't really do a whole lot, so what can we do? Well, you can go for a walk or a hike with your significant other or anybody who's in your immediate household. Parents are still able to carpool children to school as long as there's not anybody who's ill or presenting signs of illness. Grandparents are still able to provide childcare. And if there's any public pools or public skating events or associations, sorry, that are not associated with any events, then they can continue to operate with a COVID safety plan. But there is to be no um, contact. They still have to wear their masks and they still have to social distance. So you're probably thinking, but Jamie, I've already gotten my vaccine, so I should be safe from getting COVID, right? No. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but no. So we are starting to see a breakthrough reinfection after individuals have been vaccinated. So the idea of the vaccination is that it is not curative. So what that means is that the vaccine is not going to cure you or prevent you from getting COVID. The hope is that if your body responds to the vaccine appropriately, when you contract the virus, it will lessen the severity of your symptoms. So the vaccine will not prevent you from getting COVID or one of its variants. It will just hopefully lessen the severity of your symptoms. So that takes us back 
to our basic hygiene and social distancing. So even though you've been vaccinated, it's still important to stay at home when you're sick, no matter how mild your symptoms are, wear a mask, wash your hands frequently, avoid contact with others. So it's that social distancing of now three meters versus the two meters, non-essential travel. Any questions? Jamie, if you could uh, now just uh, stop sharing your screen, uh, I will go through, open it up, and uh, I will ask, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure there will be questions. Um, I'll take them in order as I look through the screen. I first see uh, Rick Minichello has a question, and I think maybe uh, Gary Teed uh, did have a question. So Gary, um, first to Rick Minichello. Thanks, President Dave. Jamie, um, I've got a, uh, a small accounting practice over in Caslow, and last week I was there, had an appointment with a, a lady. She came in, she said she had a note from her doctor that said she was not required to have a mask. I said that you may have a note from your doctor, but we require everyone that comes into our office space to have a mask on. And if you um, if if you don't want to have a mask, then we can set something up by by Zoom. And she was just adamant. She she left storming out of there. And um, uh, I, I just thought I'd ask your your uh, opinion as to whether she has a leg to stand on, or it, it appears she doesn't, but. Um, uh, that's my question. Yes, so we do actually get a lot of people coming to the office and saying, hey, can I have a note to not wear a mask? And my response to that is unless you are specifically experiencing one of the above, so you're under the age of two, you have an extreme mental health disorder that it's going to cause more distress for you to have or any trauma to have a mask on, or if you have a diagnosed medical condition, we don't write notes for that. So we also are very cautious about um, explaining to our patients that establishments, it is up to them if they are going to permit you into their establishment without a mask on. So just because we've written you a note, it doesn't mean that it's the end all be all, it's still up to that establishment because we do have a mask enforcement in place present. Thank you. Gary Teed, could you re repeat your question, please? I, I, it was fine. I just said I have to go to the province. I have to go to Alberta. Okay, it's Jamie, in a, terms it's, of- It's essential health, so that's fine. Tra travel for medical outside of the region, also outside of the province. Uh, yep. Thank you. Jamie, could you just follow up on that? I have three people here, right? We're gonna go Leon then Rob, and then the Baker home. So uh, Leon, if you could unmute yourself, please. Green needs cleaning. Okay, Leon Mueller. Thank you, President Dave. I have kids coming at the end of the month to help us move. They're coming from Saskatchewan, uh, help on, uh, us move at the end of the month. Is it considered essential travel or not? So my understanding is that if they're coming to provide specific care for you, it is essential. If it's not to provide specific care, then it is non-essential. They're providing care. <laughs> yeah. Next, I think believe Rob Geddes had a question and then the Baker House. Good morning. 
<laughs> so uh, my question is, I always hear on the news that certain age groups are allowed to get the AstraZeneca shot. And I'm in that age group, but uh, I go to the to the internet to look to apply for a uh, an appointment, and it says the closest place is Kelowna. Am I going to the right place? Is that true, or is there some uh, somewhere else I should be going to? No, um, sorry, are you looking online at, at the Interior Health website? Or? Um, I just type in. Uh, make an appointment to to get I'm not sure if I type in the AstraZeneca or just to get an immunization shot and it says we'll show you the places you click here we'll show you places on a map and the closest place is Kelowna is yeah. should I be phoning somebody or um what I'll do after I'm done here I will get um the phone number that you go on to and the website that you can go on to to book your vaccine and I'll just send them to Dave and Dave can distribute them if that's okay, Dave. Thank you, Jamie. I will forward that. That will come out in the bulletin along with the link to sure. the uh, thing. Thank you. Um, next question, I believe, uh, was coming from the Baker. Are we unmuted? Yeah. So Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong. So I've had the uh, Moderna vaccine. I may get immunity or I may not get some immunity. That's correct. So like any vaccine that we administer, we, we, give you, we give your body the tool to build up the antibodies and it just depends on how your body responds to that vaccine. So vaccines do work, but they don't work for everybody. So there's no guarantee that it works for you. So if I've had the vaccine, and I'm walking down the street um, and a vulnerable person comes along, I can be carrying the virus and shed it off to them? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Oh, just one other thing. Um, we're, a lot of us are avid golfers. And if the golf course winds up with three positive cases, as you were talking about workplaces, would the golf course be shut down and would uh, golf courses across the province be shut down? So my understanding is that if there is three positive cases in, an, in any given establishment, they will be shut down for a minimum of 10 days. I don't think that means that just, for example, if Creston had three positive cases, that doesn't mean that over in Caslo or Nelson that their golf courses are going to be shut down. It would just be specific to that site. Now, if those other sites had three positive cases, then yes, they would be shut down as well. Thank you. Okay. I have uh, first Aaron Gregory and then a follow up on uh, Mike Stutter. So Aaron. Thanks again, Jamie, for, for presenting to us today. What is the percentage for herd immunity? So um, the experts are saying that in order for us to achieve herd immunity, we have to have 80% of the population vaccinated. I don't believe we're close to that number yet. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mike Stutter, please. Need to unmute yourself, please, Mike. Thank Amy, you, Mike. Thank, thank you very much for the presentation. But uh, I had my Pfizer vac first one, Pfizer vaccine, a little over two weeks ago. How effective is that? As we have to wait, you know, Doctor uh, Henry, Bonnie Henry has said that we can go as far as sixteen weeks, I think, before the second shot. How effective is that first shot during that 16 weeks? That is a very good question. I'm just going to pull up some notes here. I just took a, a course on that. Um, just let me find the breakdown for that. All right. And sorry, you said you had the Pfizer? That's correct. Okay. 
So they're saying that there is a 95% efficacy with the first injection. So if your body's responding to the vaccine that it should respond as, you should have 95% efficacy. How long that lasts in the system, I, I can't answer that yet. I don't think we have that data that far ahead yet because the vaccines are so new. And the second part or a follow-up is uh, even though we could go as far as 16 weeks, should we get that vaccine as soon as possible? Or is that likely to you know, make it so that one other person won't get their first shot? Well, the recommendation is that you do have that second injection as soon as possible. Um, my understanding is that there's supposed to be enough vaccines for everybody who wants to get them. So as far as I'm aware, we don't have that shortage yet. And the final, final question is, are we likely to end up with having a passport for showing that we've had a full in vac vaccination? I would imagine that there will be so when you got your first vaccine, were you given a slip? Yes, I was. Yeah, so you just keep your slips and that, that demonstrates that you have received your vaccines. And then we also have to enter them into a, a system that captures that for your lifelong medical record. So it should be in our medical system, but also hang on to those slips that you're given because that's proves that you've had the vaccine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I have a next on, I have Casey and then a follow up with Leon Mueller. So Casey, unmute please. Uh, Jamie, I would just uh, reference back to this discussion about herd immunity. I see in the, in the US now, they are trying to guesstimate the number of people who've uh, were asymptomatic and uh, the numbers are estimated at 15 to 20 percent of the population has in fact had COVID and possibly don't even know they have. Have you heard of any numbers in Canada? So the numbers that I was told in Canada are 25 to 50 percent. Well, could you repeat the uh, that please for me? What does that 25 to 50% statistic re, re, uh, refer to? So that refers to those that have been infected with COVID that have displayed no symptoms. So they've been asymptomatic the entire time they had COVID. Huge. Yeah, next uh, question, Leon Mueller, did you have a follow-up question? No, I do. I, Jamie, I got the first shot of Moderna. Uh, my question is about mixing vaccines. Humboldt, I understand, uses a Pfizer. That's where I'm moving to. What about mixing the vaccines? Pfizer says second shot. Moderna, their first shot. Good question. That is a very good question. Um, and that's one that's starting to come up quite frequently as we're continuing to vaccinate. So I believe that Germany and Sweden are presently experimenting with that. And my understanding is that we're just hanging back right now to see if that's going to be something that we can go ahead and do. So we don't have a solid answer on that yet, but we are working on that. Okay. Um, and as of right now, we are not mixing the two vaccines. Thank what you. do we do? Do we come back to be to uh, Creston for yeah. our, our booster? And how do we know when we'll be out of province? Ask that name. It's been asked. Okay. <laughs> Jamie, could you answer that part? So if you are 
moving to Saskatchewan, what I would recommend is that you do touch base with the public health office in the community that you'll be living with, and they will guide you as to what the direction should be for that. Thank you. The next question I have, uh, and I'll tear it. Bill Pfeiffer, please. Unmute. Yeah, there you are, Bill. Morning, Danny. Uh, if I uh, had uh, COVID and didn't know, can I catch COVID twice? Yes, there is something called a breakthrough reinfection. So you may have COVID now and and recover from that. And then in a few months later, you may contract one of the variants of COVID as well. Would I be what? Would I, I be as sick with the first one as the second one? Yes. Thank you, Jamie. Any, any other questions? Oh, Bill, you want to follow up on that? No, no, that's fine. Thank you. Does anyone else have any uh, specific questions for Jamie? Uh, Aaron, you have one more. Sure. I feel bad drilling here, but what's what's the what what in your opinion? What's the the end scenario? Like, do you think we'll just we'll reach a point where a lot of people get the vaccine or they've at least been exposed to COVID and then it'll slowly die out? Or do you think it's going to be an endemic where this will be a yearly thing where we get a, a COVID shot, like we get a vac or a, like we get a flu shot? Do you have any, any predictions or anything that you think? Um, personally, no. Um, I think right now um, they're talking about developing vaccines for the variants. So just the fact that they're bringing that up now, that indicates to me that we're not through this yet, that we probably are sitting the way we're sitting for the next year, at least until they come up with those vaccines for the variants. But I really don't know what, what our government is going to decide to do and how we're going to handle this. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, I'm looking at all the, that 25 screens. Uh, any other questions uh, for Jamie for this presentation? Uh, Linda waved a little note there, Greg, in behind you. Do you have another question, Linda? Uh, and you need to unmute, Greg, please. Unmute, please. And this will be the last question. Uh, it was. Jamie, for the people that have the long haul um, symptoms, are they contagious right throughout that whole period? That's a good question. Um, they're saying at this current time, no, because they're not uh, symptomatic and in the acute phase of the virus or of their illness to the virus. So those are just the long-term effects of having had COVID. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So Jamie, thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Um, the, uh, I'm not sure that it's overdue. I think it's very timely um, and uh, for our club to have that information. So, I'd like to thank you very much on behalf of the Creston Valley Rotary Club for an excellent presentation for us this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And now as we, we, we move on, I'm going to just stop the recording now so that uh, it will be effective for uh, replay.